Okay. Hello everyone. Ooh. Okay. I think we're good. Um, hopefully I have a good um, stream without blocky connection. I'm on a mobile, so it may not be fantastic. You will see me in a bit. Um, but to begin with, uh, I just want to talk very briefly about what we're doing today. I've got a few notes to start off with. Um, so we're at Ormbywood Hedgehog Sanctuary, we're a charity that rescues hedgehogs based in Harpenden, Hertfordshire. Uh, we rescue up to 250, 250 hedgehogs a year. Um, we've got various places outside rehabilitation hutches, hospital, little pens for the hedgehogs. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the best garden for hedgehogs. So uh, a garden, fr a hedgehog friendly garden basically for hedgehogs. Um, the actual stream itself is probably about 30 minutes. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments and I will try my best to answer as many as I can after the stream. I probably won't be able to do it during the stream. So this is a uh, Hedgehog Awareness Week. So we're doing various things. This is one of the things to help spread awareness for the troubles that hedgehogs have. Um, it's organised by the British Hedgehog Preservation Society and there's a hashtag, Hedgehog Week. Um, in the description of this video, there'll be various links, um, including links to some material that will be useful. After the stream, we'll talk about it. Um, if you'd like to donate to us, that'd be absolutely fantastic. We are a charity. We run solely on donations, so it'd be amazing if you can. The link's in the description about that. If you're a, tri a Twitch streamer, um, um, please get in contact with us. We're, we're looking to hopefully um, engage some more streamers to help fundraise for the charity. Last month, we had uh, Geek Beak raised um, a huge amount of money for the hedgehogs, and this month, we've got Fist of Fury helping to raise money for the charity as well. So. Um, Let's get started. Okay, so uh, we've got about 20 different things we're going to go through. But we've got, so Fern's going to be running around the place. She's got an infected eye, um, so she's got this collar on that she absolutely hates. Um, so we'll start off with the most important thing. So all of the things we're going to talk about aren't really worth talking about unless you do this first, which is the best thing you can do for garden hedgehogs, and that is create an access hole or root into your garden for hedgehogs. It doesn't have to be much, only a 13 centimeter hole. If you can, if you can cut it into your fence or maybe a, if you've got a wall, cut a hole in the wall, that'd be absolutely amazing. I use, I don't actually have many fences here, but when we do cut holes I use this drill, it's got a, a little templated hole in the front of it. It basically allows root in for hedgehogs to get through to your gardens and if you want to link up your gardens and do it through the whole street that's absolutely amazing. So that's the best thing you can do. So let's move on. Now one thing you shouldn't do is use pesticides, slug pellets or poisons because um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, hedgehogs do eat slugs, and when the slugs eat the poison, the pesticides, it then enters the food chain of the hedgehog. They themselves get poisoned, and often it can kill them. It's a nasty chemical, and I do have some examples here that I'm going to show you. So obviously, pesticides, when you're spraying, so you're spraying weeds and things like that, it's not good for um, the environment and not good for any wildlife, including bugs and vertebrates, which hedgehogs eat. But in this tin here, I'm going to very brief, I'm going to put some gloves on because this is actual poison. So a lot of people use these, you, should, um, it's, it's, you get them in different forms like pellets and you get them in um, little sachets and things like that. I'm just going to show you, let's open it up. So I've got gloves on because they are actually poisonous to people too. So, so there we've got two different types here. We've got this. This is a large block, but you uh, um, can get smaller blocks of these as well. And that, if you touch this, it's actually poisonous and get into your bloodstream. And you've got these like little rat things. Um, unlikely a hedgehog will eat them, but obviously they can do, and that's poison in there as well. 
very bad for hedgehogs al along with other mammals actually really so please try and avoid using that it's not good so i'll put that back in there let's put this top back on and there we go okay so bonfires this is a big one uh, bonfires unlit are actually an amazing place for hedgehogs to habitat and also forage for food so it's not a bad idea to stack up a bonfire but just don't light it because <laughs> it's a really good habitat for them but the problem comes when you become when you light the bonfire if it's been left there for a long time uh, what ends up happening or could happen is a hedgehog can come inside nest inside and then obviously when the when the fire is lit a uh, hedgehog will be inside and it's devastating and almost certainly catastrophic injury for the hedgehog so be very very careful bonfires ideally if you're stacking a bonfire and you're not going to light it straight away if, if you do light it straight away it's the best thing to do but you can move it a few meters away and then light it that's a good thing failing that you can you can sort of bang it around a place listen to noises listen to hissing noises sometimes hedgehogs make hissing noises and if they are in there they should make a noise light it from one side when you do light it and then at least it leaves a, an escape route for the hedgehog okay let's move on to hedges i try and plant hunt hedges everywhere so these are actually <coughs> willows so hedgehogs are um so hedges are amazing because hedgehogs love to nest in them forage in them it's a natural habitat for hedgehogs so if you can plant hedges everywhere everywhere um it provides a, a nice safe place for them as well so that's one very good tip for your garden hedges um let's move on into here <clears throat> so this is a, a soft release pen for hedgehogs actually um, and I've got a few things in here Hold on, let's just have a quick look so I've put these nest this is nothing to do with hedgehogs but I put these nest boxes up actually uh, Mike did and we have got nesting oh there's eggs in there there's no birds in there we have got nesting birds in all of them all of them have and I check them every now and then right mowers um, be very careful with mowers so when you're mowing the lawn just take um, before you do actually mow the lawn have, check the area make sure there's no hedgehogs long grass like this is brilliant for hedgehogs to nest in they will do it they will nest in there um, and the problem with mowers especially these types when you raise them up uh, it's it, there will definitely go over a hedgehog so it's very dangerous for hedgehogs just be very careful when you're mowing you can get if you're part of a community group and, the, and there's quite a few of you that use the equipment you can get little stickers here from the British Hedgehog Preservation Society just give them a ring and they'll send them out to you um, if you do mow the lawn if you can don't have to but if you can <clears throat> mow just a strip so like a little path through your garden and that will allow the, the, the more areas to grow which provides more habitats and places for little hedgehogs to forage for food so i tend to just have a path around areas rather than mow the whole it's also easier <laughs> um and uh, strimmers this is a big one i don't actually use this strimmer this is redundant <clears throat> it's just too dangerous so take care when you're strimming uh strimmers are uh, they they cause fatal injuries and horrific injuries for hedgehogs so be extremely careful if you do use them especially long grass and these are the worst ones <clears throat> with the solid blade so yeah they're very dangerous for you as well so be careful on there so Try not to use them, but if you have to, just be very careful where you do to make sure there's no nesting hedgehogs um, because they love, obviously, nesting long grass. Another good tip is a wild corner. So part of your garden, maybe the end of your garden, just leave it, leave it growing. Uh, let the shrubs grow, wildflowers. Um, you can plant native wildflowers as well it attracts huge amounts of insects invertebrates and things like that which in turn provides foods for the hedgehog this is <clears throat> an extreme version of a wild area i just i just don't manage it at all so so it's left to be i'm not going to go too far in but it's just full of stingers here and the back it's got loads of plants and uh, wildflowers it's quite a big area so yeah if you can do that absolutely fantastic all right, let's move into here. So these are these are all the rehabilitation hutches for when we rehabilitate hedgehogs, especially during the spring summer months. Um, there's about 20 or so in here at the moment. They should all be asleep, but there might be one or two awake. Uh, ponds. Okay, 
So ponds are um, extremely good for hedgehogs. Um, this is just an example. There are actually frogs and things in here. Um, just be very careful with ponds to make sure there's an exit route, a ramp. So they're good swimmers, hedgehogs, but if they can't get out again, then they end up getting drowned. They'll drown basically if they can't get out. So it's very dangerous for them. Various ways of making ramps. I've got wood here. There's some slates in there actually you can't see. You can put bricks, pebbles, um, even slates. So yeah, any of those things will create a nice little ramp for a hedgehog to go in and out of your pond. Um, uh, one or two would do. The older ponds, the 1950s, 1960s ponds, they tend to have a vertical edge to them. And those are very dangerous because once a hedgehog accidentally falls in, it's almost impossible for them to get out again. So, yeah, just be very careful with ponds. Um, we do get some hedgehogs that uh, do make it, and that's only if they're found, but they end up um, being extremely exhausted um, and tired. And also, you know, just imagine being in a pond for a day or something like that, trying to stay afloat. It's a... Uh, it's really nasty for hedgehogs. So yeah, if you have a pond, make it safe, put a ramp in there. It can be nice, pebbles as well. If you put pebbles in there, the birds love it. So there you go, that's ponds. Okay, <clears throat> another useful thing to do. Also, all these things save work, by the way, as well. Stay, uh, twigs, just stack them up into a big pile. That's what I do, I have stacks all over the place. Um, um, it's a it's a dense area basically for hedgehogs, so it's a good place for them to to temporarily nest, especially when the hot hot weather, the sun out, the sun provides a habitat for them, allows them to forage for food. Often little bugs and vertebrates will sort of come in there. Um, so yeah, if you can do that, and in the winter time, of course, as well, there's a chance that they might actually nest in here. So they drag materials in here, dried grass and things like that, and they will create a nest inside those piles of twigs. So great place for hedgehogs. Um, yeah, you can stick at the end of the garden, something like that, out the way if you want to. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a good thing to do for hedgehogs. Um, bug hotels. We've got a few of these. <clears throat> um, this is a big one. <laughs> you don't need it this big. But um, these are these can be made out of just about anything. And all, all you're trying to do is create cavities and, and places, little holes and things like that for bugs to sort of enter in there and start living inside your bug hotel, which is basically creating a food source for hedgehogs and other insects, birds and all the rest of it. So, yeah, this is a big pallet hotel, a large one. But, yeah, you can have small ones large ones uh, the location doesn't matter where it is end of the garden out of the way um they're good so if you can make one of them you'll be doing a good job not just for hedgehogs actually for all kinds of birds as well piles of logs um piles of logs are absolutely fantastic um i tend to stack up uh, they'll, these are rot, slightly rotten now. I tend to stack them up all over the place. Um, instead of um, burning them, things like that, just stack them up or, or use them as paths. I often use them as paths as well around the edges. And that provides a nice place for invertebrates to start and worms and bugs and things like that to get in there, which provides a food source for hedgehogs and also another type of habitat for a hedgehog, a natural habitat. So they're really good if you can. That's the wrong side sign there. <laughs> I don't know where, where I've put the other sign. That says remove litter but we're going to come to that in a minute <laughs> um, so yeah these are the headshot they all should be sleeping fingers crossed yep okay litter I've purposely put this bag here <laughs> um, <clears throat> so if you do find litter in your garden um, always pick it up even if not in your garden anywhere actually <clears throat> bags and um, can holders anything that the hedgehog can get trapped in with their spines or actually their head can can come through can be a hazard for hedgehogs so plastic bags especially um, but the thicker plastic is even worse even worse than that sort of litter is actually let's put this in here uh, this is the hog supermarket this is a food store for the hedgehogs all different types of food we feed them jelly based dog and cat food some dried food there as well also netting this is this little sign here came from um, an, a local allotment and i kept it because it's really good and they put these on all the allotments a little sign here so they i mean this is a local one so um last year they have seven hedgehogs trapped in nest uh, netting that's plastic netting used um to protect vegetables and things like that from birds and slugs and all the rest of it um 
they've had four die so that's the netting that you, you use on allotments and things like that they tend to drag on the floor and because it's really fine plastic the spines of the hedgehogs get trapped in them they're entangled very dangerous traps for hedgehogs so yeah if you do have netting or do use netting please be very careful um, you can you can use it just keep it off the ground a foot or so at least off the ground would be beneficial but if there's another way you can protect your your um, vegetables that'd be great or a permanent um, metal type um, netting is even better okay you all right fern yeah okay right let's move on around here so this is the that was the hedgehogs hotel this area here um that's the hotel there's a soft release pen and then here we got some hay for bedding and things like that i put um wood chippings on the floor there's actually plastic underneath here i've done this a few times um the plastics make sure it doesn't actually just dissolve into the ground but wood chippings um are there to help me because it gets extremely muddy in the winter let's go around here Now, I'm uh, assuming a lot of you have compost heaps, which are fantastic, um, but I don't actually have a compost. I use a wormery, so there's works like a big barrel. I throw everything in there, and there's some worms in there, and they break it down. So compost heaps, they're really good. Um, uh, just be very careful because um, as the compost heaps to decompose that creates heat and it's a brilliant place for hedgehogs especially now so this is we're coming to hoglet season so you get little hoglets baby hedgehogs um, and it's a great place because it's warm for the mother to start nesting inside a compost heap so be very careful with the fork because you can stab hedge hedgehogs um, but yeah the compost heaps are actually very good if you want to be certain that no hedgehogs going to go in there just make sure it's raised off the ground and, and if you can the base of it to be solid but i have a a wormery in a bucket um, and I use that for fertilizer and stuff which is really good okay I've got a few nesting boxes here I've been really successful successful this year thanks to Mike who helped me out with them um, putting up all these nesting boxes I'm chuffed to bits they're all they've all got birds in them <coughs> um, with, with, it, with eggs as well this is the Hogs Hospital as a check-in, check-out zone. That's for summer months, really. We won't go in there. So, holes and drains. So, there is an example. It's an example. So, if you've got um, drain covers that are open, deep holes in the ground, hedgehogs can fall into there and become trapped. And if they're in there long enough, what ends up happening is they become extremely dehydrated and emaciated starved basically and they're all oh, extremely thirsty so if you can any open holes that are deep cover them up um just a bit of wood um cover over the top like that and a brick on top will be enough uh, something solid obviously so another mammal doesn't move it out the way if you can do that that will help out hedgehogs a huge amount okay let's move around here and down here and we're going to talk about feeding hedgehogs now and hedgehog houses so this is a really good thing to do for hedgehogs all year round um, both hedgehog houses and feeding stations you can just feed them you can put bowls out outside but the problem you'll find is other mammals will start eating that food and the hedgehogs might not get it so first off let's talk about hedgehog houses <clears throat> you can make these out of almost anything really just about um you can make them i make these ones out of old decking boards and you can build them yourself and you can buy them um but there's nothing wrong with building your own hedgehog house uh, as long as they're watertight on top and about this sort of size ish um ideally um an entrance of 13 centimeters or more not too big and with a tunnel going in so cats and things like that can't drag their claws in there if there's nesting mum with hoglets because um, cats can be very dangerous for baby hoglets um, you can make them out of um, wood uh, piles of logs bricks we talked about even clay or in pots and things like that so lots of ways to make hedgehog houses just make sure um, that you leave next to it some nesting material dried grass straw 
dried leaves, things like that, that they can drag in and make a nest and then put some inside the hedgehog house. You don't need to clean it out that often. Once a year is fine. Um, a good time of the year is around September time-ish uh, before they start hibernating. So this should be a good time to, to clean it out. Um, you can just clean it out with water and then put fresh bedding back in there. This is a repurposed hedgehog house. This is a, I think there's a rabbit hutch, but they work, they're not ideal, but it's better than nothing. So, and they will use that. There's a little ramp that goes in there and the roof, you can inspection roof and then on the top. Um, and we sell hedgehog houses. If you go to our website, uh, we sell hedgehog houses and we sell hedgehog food and bowls and things like that. If you ever want to purchase anything from us, all the money go, raised goes to the hedgehogs. So let's talk about bowls. Um, doesn't matter really what size the bowl is, uh, as long as it's shallow, a shallow uh, side to it. Um, the solid bowls tend to be better because hedgehogs will push them and turn them upside down. So yeah, these ones tend to be better for food and water. Um, what to feed them? Um, there's a few different types of food. Let's have a look here. <clears throat> so we'll start off with, this is jelly based cat food. Doesn't matter what brand, but these are really good. That sachet is not really enough for one hedgehog. Um, you probably need at least two, sometimes three sachets for a hedgehog. Half a can, basically, ish. They, they can eat a lot uh, per night. And these are little cat biscuits. They'll eat them as well. Um, try not to get, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the dog biscuits as well, but they just can't eat um, large. They can't crunch them up. So if you've got smaller type cat biscuits, they're good as well, so. Um, if you're using the jelly based stuff, be careful of flies, put it out in the evening time, and if you can clean the bowl the next time because it attracts the lava, it's not very nice. The dried stuff you can actually leave out for a lot longer. Uh, and then there's also hedgehog food, which we sell as well. So actual hedgehog food, different brands, lots of different types. Um, this stuff's great, you can leave it out a lot longer. As long as it doesn't get wet, um, it should be totally fine for a good week, two weeks, something like that, not a problem. Um, and they love this stuff. It's like a crunchy, oily based biscuit for hedgehogs. So that's that. Now, to feed them, you can just simply put the bowls out, which is fine. But a better alternative is actually to make a feeding station. I've got two examples here. So start with this one. So this one is literally a plastic tub inside here. You'd put the food bowl. So you'd stick your food bowl in there, fill it with food. And then this is a, a, a cat complicator. So it's got a tunnel. So I don't know if you can see that. It's got a hole there, a tunnel in, and then it's got a hole at the end. So it allows the hedgehog to go in, but not the cats or the foxes or the dogs and everything else. So uh, more, more likely to feed the hedgehogs than the local cats and whatnot. So they're really good. Um, this is another type, a simple plastic tub. Um, all you need to do is cut a hole 13 centimeters or more. If it's sharp, like this is a little bit sharp, you can put some duct tape around the edges so it doesn't cut the hedgehog. Um, yeah, so as long as the hedgehog can get through the hole, you're good. And uh, we can put something heavy on top to make sure it doesn't blow away or other mammals push it out the way. And they're really good, the clear ones, if you want to set up a night camera, they're really good to, to record night activity as hedgehogs. As far as what they drink, do not give them milk. It's very bad for them. Just plain old water, tap water's fine. Um, in a shallow bowl, they'll love you for that. Okay. All right, Fern, we're going next one. Come on in. You can take your toy with you. Yeah? Yeah, she's struggling at the moment. She's got an infected eye. And she hates that thing, really does. She can't pick up anything, but she's got to have it, so. Ah, oh, here we go. Well, this is a good, careful of dogs. There you go, good example. So just be careful of dogs. Um, if they're aggressive, so if a dog's aggressive and they're harassing a hedgehog, especially if they're likely to attack a hedgehog, be very careful if you've got hedgehogs in your garden. I mean, obviously your garden's for your dog as well. So, but if you can, um, in the, especially in the evening time, um, before you let the dog out, turn the floodlights on, just check outside to make sure there's no hedgehogs out there um, and then let the dog out, ideally on a lead, but you know, um, as long as you check the area, you'll be fine. Uh, but if your dog's not aggressive and it's not going to harass the hedgehog, which a lot of dogs don't, then you'll be totally fine. They'll have a sniff maybe and that's about it. So 
yet be careful of dogs. This is a uh, our next project um, which we're doing this year. Um, this entire pen is a big pen. It's going to be a wildlife habitat for hedgehogs that are disabled, as in blind. So we can't release blind hedgehogs back into the wild. Um, and I want to create maybe six or eight gardens here for those hedgehogs. Um, so over this year, maybe a garden at a time, and then we'll have ponds in there. And all the things I've just talked about, we're going to have specific gardens for the hedgehogs. So. The ones, only the ones that are disabled. All, all the hedgehogs get released back into the wild, generally from where they came from, um, but some of them can't be. Um, so we either find gardens that are enclosed, non-hedgehog friendly gardens, or we, um, I just saw something in there. No. Or um, we'll, we'll keep them here and look after them until they can find a house. Right, if a hedgehog needs help, so this is an important thing here. So if a hedgehog's injured, distressed, lethargic, wobbling, um, blood on it, um, anything out during the day often, that's a, a good sign. Um, what you can do is pick the hedgehog out, put it into a, a cardboard box with gloves because their spines are very sharp. Um, sometimes they will have fleas, but the, they tend not to have fleas, but when they do have fleas, that's generally an indication something's going on with them, something's wrong with them. They can have ticks as well. Um, so just be careful, put, put gloves on, um, in a cardboard box and put some old towels and snuggle up to. You can offer it some, a shallow bowl of water and some jelly-based dog or cat food. Just be careful though, because sometimes if they're, um, they're um, um, emaciated or dehydrated, often they won't drink that, or you can make it worse if you give them dried food as well. But And then straight away, um, put it in some uh, someplace quiet, out of the way, out of direct sunlight, and then get help for it. Uh, best place is uh, phoning the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. They can give you advice and they can put you in contact with a local rescue centre like us, uh, one of uh, 650 in the UK. So wherever you are, you can always find the British Hedgehog Preservation Society and they will find a local rescue centre for you. Okay. Uh, let's, I don't know what this is. Oh, here we go. This is the last little bit here. So um, let's put this here. So the whole purpose of this week, hedgehogs are now on the red list becoming endangered. So less than a million left in the UK about-ish. The population has decreased substantially since the year 2000. We've lost about 30% of hedgehogs in urban areas and 50% in rural areas. Various reasons for that, but habitats loss is a big one, but also roads, cars is another big one. I think the latest statistics or estimated statistics is around 100 to 350,000 hedgehogs each year getting killed on the roads. But I know PTES are doing research into that as we speak. So, yeah, that's a big one. But all the things we talk about, pesticides, bad, like things like that. Um, a lot of hedgehogs nowadays, because of motorways, they're siloed into small areas, so they can't breed and things like that. I think there are some projects going on to help you know, increase the, 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 the availability of tunnels under roads that hedgehogs can travel through to make sure they can get to wherever they need to go, food sources. I will put you on me, as in you face me now. And we'll just quickly talk about um, a roundup of what we have just been talking about. I don't know if you can see me. Hopefully you can. Should be able to. There we go. So if you want to know more about what we talked about today, there's a whole bunch of leaflets and information you can get for free from the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. We, if you look on the description of this link uh, on, in the, on this video, there's a link to um, uh, this material. There's lots of these leaflets. Uh, on our website, uh, there's a section called Awareness. Head there and you'll be able to get links to all of these documents. So basically everything we talked about, there is likely to be a flyer of sorts. So yeah, you've got a whole bunch of stuff and you can put these up in um, community places, stuff like that. Um, the red list becoming endangered. Just talking about dogs and things like that, um, and also in schools um, and maybe in councils and something like that. But they're really good for spreading awareness. Okay, there's obviously this is really bad. Little plastic um, rings around cans, very dangerous. Um, other creatures that can be affected, of course, by things that you do, uh, and what to feed them. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So, yeah, if you look in the description, you'll find links to these and more. 
Um, and to finish off, so we're just about finished. <laughs> to finish off, I would um, <clears throat> like to thank everyone who's watching all the support recently we've had. If you'd like to become a member, so we're a charity, uh, there are links in the description. Go to our website, become a member of Hornby Wood Hedgehog Sanctuary. It helps us out a huge amount. Um, so the actual, each hedgehog is about £20 a month to feed and shelter each hedgehog. We've also got an online shop where you can buy various bits and bobs. Um, and then this video will be available offline um, once the stream's ended. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. We're about half an hour in. Um, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much for your support. Um, and Hedgehog Week goes on for the whole of this week. It's from the 2nd to the 8th. So there's various other um, awareness programs and literature and marketing going around to help spread awareness, specifically about things we talked about here, but other issues that hedgehogs face. So thank you very much. Take care. Bye.